the morning, people. Uh, hopefully the rain's not making too much noise on the garage door. Finished a book yesterday. The Fourth Crusade and the Sack of Constantinople. I started to make this video yesterday, too, but uh, I kind of got it screwed up. Uh, the book starts out with a brief history of other crusades. The prologue and, and the, the uh, introduction. I've said this before in other videos. This is the way that you learn about things. You don't get a giant book that is the Crusades. You break it down at least into the individual Crusades. And uh, there was at least seven large ones. But there was a whole shit ton of little ones. And people were going over there all the time. These people made a deal with the Venetians to carry them to the to the Holy Land, to the Levant, is what they call it. And the Venetians spent an entire year building this enormous fleet. And it turned out that the Crusaders couldn't pay the Venetians all the money that they wanted. So they were honest people. They wanted to pay them. And so to to effect this, they went and sacked, uh, they sacked Zara, and then they eventually sacked Constantinople, so that they could give the Venetians their money. The Pope didn't really approve of them, it's starting start to rain a little bit harder, the Pope didn't really approve of them killing other Christians, you know, they were supposed to have, uh, Islamic blood on their swords, not Christian blood. But there was a lot of long-standing animosity between the Western Church and the Eastern Church. I just made a note here about King Philip of France. He was a, a notable of the Third Crusade. Uh, he married a ten-year-old girl. This is 400 years after people make a big deal about Muhammad marrying a seven-year-old girl. Well, this is 400 years later. This was very commonplace during the medieval period. Anytime you see somebody on YouTube saying, oh, fucking Muhammad was a pedophile. Well, so was 30% of the king's in Europe. A lot of first-hand accounts in this book, which is very nice. Some of, uh, some of the Crusaders were actually literate enough to, uh, to be able to write. Uh, the Franks do business with the Venetian Doge. Yeah, the, the Doge, his name is Dan Dallo. And uh, Dan Dallo's a pretty fucking interesting character. He goes with them. He's in his 80s when they begin. He ends up dying on this crusade. But he's in his 80s. He's fat. He's blind. This guy actually leads from the front a couple of times. He understands uh, uh, tactics. Uh, he's, a, he's a very interesting guy. Uh, they go into a lot of descriptions of Constantinople which are very nice. Uh, there's first-hand accounts, or I'm assuming it's a first-hand account. It might not be from Procopius. Uh, they go into a lot of descriptions of the Hagia Sophia, this big, huge church in Constantinople. Yes, I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it goes from... Uh, an Eastern Orthodox Church, to a Catholic Church, to a mosque, to kind of like a museum, but now it's a mosque again, if, if uh, we've all paid attention to the news. The Crusaders are camped outside Constantinople for probably a year and a half, maybe even longer. Constantinople is a crazy city. I can't think of a crazier city, maybe Alexandria. Uh, 
they go through at least four emperors while this is going on. Not only do they owe the Venetians money, and they go there to sack the city to get the money, but they also go there to install this Alexius III, who has convinced them that he is the, the correct uh, he's the correct emperor. Uh, his father Isaac is sitting in a jail cell when this thing belongs. He has had his eyes gouged out. A lot of weird things are happening. Prince Alexius, that's that's the guy's name. He ends up getting killed, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Mertzuflis is the one that kills Prince Alexis. Um, Emperor Isaac, the guy that had been formerly blinded, he wasn't too bad. I guess he had a gorgeous wife. There's a, a gentleman named Robert of Clary who writes for the... Uh, Crusaders. The Varangian Guard is there, and the Varangian Guard, if I understand correctly, are actually Norsemen, and and probably not a hundred percent Norsemen. And even you know, even the definition of Norsemen is all tangled up. Uh, they fight with battle axes. They seem to be pretty. You know, they're the best troops that the, they have at Constantinople. I know later on, you know, in 1453, when, when uh, the, the Turks sacked Constantinople for the final time, the Varangian Guard don't seem to put up much of a defense there. They seem to, you know, they put their fingers in here to see which way the wind is blowing. This... Uh, the Latins is what they call the Crusaders. They only hold Constantinople from 1204 to 1261. I got a lot of things here that I was supposed to supposed to read, and I'm choosing not to do it. I'm going to read this one, page 296. If I can find it. Third paragraph. Yeah, this is, this is the one I want to agree with. Uh, this is about some guy that's impersonating one of, the, one of the crusader notables that was actually thrown in the jail. And, you know, there's, they give three or four descriptions of how he may have died. After Baldwin's death, his daughter Joan steered the county into a closer relationship with the French crown, a policy opposed by some within Flanders. In 1224, a hermit in the village of Morte, near Tournay, was identified as a crusading champion of Baldwin. But this he denied. Within a year, however, as various nobles and clerics came to see him and talk to him, the man eventually stated that he was the Count himself. In Holy Week 1225, he showed scars that the real Baldwin had allegedly possessed. Inconveniently, however... He was about a foot shorter than the Count. His local geography was hazy, and his French was rather more erratic than people remembered. One writer put these factors down to advancing age and time spent in Greek prisons. With the flexible approach to memory and physical likeness, the town of Valencia received the individual they called Emperor, and he took a ceremonial bath and had a shave. Such was their delight at his reappearance that the monks of St. John's Abbey kept his whiskers and drank his bath water. There was some other stuff that I wanted to read in there too, but I, I've decided not to. Uh, the, uh, the Crusaders eventually sack Constantinople, which is, I still can't quite figure out how they were able to do it so easily because Constantinople really withstood a lot of sieges in its time. And when they do sack it, they they go on a murderous rampage through the town. This is Christians killing Christians now. A murderous rampage, raping, killing, and you know, going after any loot that they can find. They melt down crosses, they melt down off, 
alters. They uh, they they just take everything, clothing, anything you can think of. They do finally pay back out of this loot. They finally pay back the Venetians, and the Crusades continue from there. Thanks for watching.